Good evening. This is our fourth virtual salute to graduating seniors. I am Winifred Still Davis, Vice President and Educational Chairperson of the Lawnside Scholarship Club Incorporated. It is my privilege to welcome the parents, guardians, teachers, principals, administrators, sponsors, donors, and contributors, club members, past and present, and friends as we celebrate our graduating seniors of 2023. Our graduating seniors started high school at the beginning of the pandemic. Their school days started in a virtual way, then in-person attendance started, but as we sometimes say, through it all, they endured the pandemic and made it to their graduation day. So seniors, give yourself an A plus for endurance. There is nothing <clears throat> that can stop you now. To everyone, I say welcome again to the Salute to Graduating Seniors virtual celebration. We appreciate your presence, your support to the graduates. Since 1945, the Lawnside Scholarship Club has put their best foot forward to assist the Lawnside High School graduates to achieve their goals in life. We continue to support them with book awards available for the four years of college. We also can give additional assistance if needed. Let us now celebrate our high school seniors. At this time, Mrs. Christine Lewis Coker, one of our newest members, she's our coordinator of student gifts. She will introduce the mistress of ceremonies. Good evening, everyone. Our mistress of ceremonies is Gina Wardlow Hill. Um, she was born and raised in Lawnside and was the top scholarship recipient in 1989. Since her youth, Gina has been active in her community, participating in various events and organizations with the support of her family. She attended Livingston College at Rutgers University and went on to receive her law degree from Rutgers School of Law. She has over 25 years experience in providing legislative and regulatory counsel in the retirement plan and insurance industries, but places an equal value on her work that she does in the community. Gina is the president of the Jersey Explorers Children's Museum and a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. She enjoys mentoring through Rutgers Business School and New Jersey LEEP, as well as volunteering with various nonprofit organizations. I present to you, Gina Wardlow Hill. Great. Uh, good evening, everyone, students, faculty, family members, and loved ones. As uh, Witty stated, I am the Mistress of Ceremony. I'm here to welcome everyone on behalf of the Lawnside Scholarship Club. It's an, an exciting day for us. We work very hard throughout the year to, to put this event on, even if it's virtual. We appreciate the effort of our students in taking the time to fill out the forms, to come to the various um, conferences or uh, meetings that we had at the various schools. And so we just wanna take time to take a second really for the students to take a breath and really relish in what they have accomplished. We are proud of them as we are sure their parents and family and friends are, and we are excited to begin our program. So with that, we will open our program as we should with opening remarks by, <coughs> excuse me, Reverend Clifford Steele, pastor of the Mount Zion United Methodist Church in Lawnside. Reverend Steele will give words of encouragement to the class of 2023. Reverend. Thank you, Gina. A good evening to everyone, faculty, uh, parents, and, and, and most of all, students. And I congratulate you uh, on your accomplishment. Uh, you have just taken your first step toward the rest of your life. And I pray that as you continue to go forth, you would continue to matriculate, as you continue to matriculate through the educational process, that you would be open to learn all that is there for you to learn. Uh, because you cannot dream of becoming something that you do not know about. You have to learn to dream big. 
Education exposes you to what the world has to offer, to the possibility, possibilities that are open to you. Even though we may live in an age of instant messaging, instant gratification, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, but I want you to know there is no shortcut to the path of success. So I say to you, forget about the fast lane. If you really want to fly, just harness your power to your passion. Honor your calling. Everybody has one. Trust your heart and success will come to you. And don't forget to keep the Lord front and center as you move forward. Thank you. And now we're going to bless, pray a blessing for you. Exactly. Most gracious and glorious Father, we thank you for each one of these young people, these young adults that have uh, matriculated through the high school process and some are going on to college, Lord. We pray that you would cause the people that cross their paths to find favor in them. We pray that you would compass them as with a shield. We pray that when the enemy comes, Lord, you would raise a standard against them. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would keep our youth with their minds open, with their minds stayed on their work, that they would be able to continue to excel and go further than what they even thought they could go. We pray that you would allow them not to put themselves in a box, but to be open-minded so that they can receive all this out there to receive and use that which is usable for them in their situations. Now we also ask that you bless their families and the loved ones that will be sending them forth as they continue to matriculate through the educational process. Help them to stand, Lord, because it's not easy in this world today. And then we ask that you compass them as with a shield and protect them as they go forth. For it's in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Steele. Uh, we will open with a musical, musical selection by Mr. Derek Davis, soloist. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the lightning sky. Let it resound loud as the roar. Lindsay, sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Thank you, Mr. Davis. You, I can't help but smile at that last, at the, at the last word. You feel such pride. Um, we'll move on. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we're pleased to be able to present one of our students who was the top recipient in 2002. I'm speaking of Ms. Jasmine Walker Montepulli. She's a West Point graduate, commissioned a second lieutenant as an Army intelligence officer. She's received numerous awards, is the assistant professor of systems engineering, was an associate director of the Center for Leadership and Diversity in STEM, and found time to be a volunteer as well. We know she has a word on how to pursue your goals in life. May I present Ms. Jasmine Walker Montepalli. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me. Can you hear me okay? 
Yes. Greetings from greetings from St. Lucia after 15 hours of a flight today. Well, actually, I guess I started yesterday. Um, but I'm just I'm I'm just uh, here with gratitude, honestly, for this wonderful community. Um, I want to acknowledge. I mean, the way that you show up and support your youth, especially as they transition into adulthood, is um, truly inspiring. Um, I, I think I've said that maybe a hundred times and I'll say it a million times more. Um, it really makes more of a difference than I can put into words. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a community come around its, you know, encircle the wagons around, um, its youth the way that this community does. So, um, thank you so much for everything that you do. And I will echo congratulations to all of our seniors here this evening. Um, I want to acknowledge that the last few years have been challenging for all of us, but I think, um, as I've reflected, I think it's been especially difficult for your class. The young adults who spent years in isolation at a time when social interaction is such an essential part of development and self-awareness. So before I get into this little chat, um, I just want to say that you, each and every one of you should be proud. Your parents should be proud. Your community should be proud of you. And it's not just because of your academic accomplishments. You know, those are fantastic, but I, I really want to acknowledge your grit, your perseverance, your resilience. I, I want to I want you to reflect on a time when you smiled in 2020, despite being isolated, a time that you made a friend or family member smile in 2021, a time you chose to be kind to someone in 2022. I want you to be proud of those moments and, and the moments we're here to celebrate tonight in 2023. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, I, again, I truly appreciate being asked to speak with you all tonight. Um, and so the theme of this speech is going to be crap I wish someone other than my parents told me before I graduated high school. <laughs> Um, and I'll do this through um, some some lessons that I've learned, and I like to tell stories about um, experiences that I've had, some of them good, some of them bad, some of them um, sad. And uh, one thing about me is that I pride myself on being authentic. I'm never insta ready. Um, <laughs> I will put I will I will tell the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think um, learning and growing from that is has been um, it's made all the difference, I think, in my life. Um, so about 21 years ago, I was sitting where you are now. Uh, I was getting ready to graduate from high school and report to West Point on July 1st. Just a few months prior, um, in the fall of 2001, I remember being so excited to receive my early acceptance letter to West Point. I, I have to confess here in the spirit of transparency that uh, when I applied to West Point, I was still very, very immature. Um, I fully admit that. In hindsight, I, I think I applied to West Point more for the prestige um, that came along with the name. Um, I didn't really understand what it meant to serve. And about a week after I received my early acceptance to West Point, I was sitting in Dr. Floyd's AP biology class in Haddon Heights High School, and someone came into the classroom and told Dr. Floyd to turn on the news. Um, Doc Floyd turned on the news, um, and on the TV was a picture of a skyscraper on fire. Um, there had been a plane crash. Uh, I remember the entire class was completely silent, and we watched this horrible, what we thought was an accident in New York City. Um, and then we watched in horror as the camera panned slightly to the right, and a second plane crashed into the second tower. Um, and as the hours passed, I remember I started to understand like the full gravity of what was happening. Uh, what was happening was that we were at war. We were at war and I might be going to a military academy. And I remember over the next few weeks, my family and friends pestering me, you know, what are you going to do now, Jasmine? Um, and when I look back on that time, the thing is that I had already made my decision. I made my decision on September 11th, 2001. And I was able to respond, well, I'm going to West Point. I'm going to serve my country. And I answered that with complete certainty. And this time, the prestige and the glory and all of that was gone. Like It wasn't even a blip in my mind. And on July 1st, 2002, I reported to the United States Military Academy, um, part of the first class to do so after 9-11. 
And this brings me to the first lesson um, in the list of crap I wish someone other than my parents told me before I graduated from high school. Uh, I, I want you to understand that as you go forward in life and as you grow, it's not going to be the good times that are going to truly define who you are and, and test your character. It's not when things come easy that we test our moral fortitude. You're going to grow the most as a person during the most difficult of times. Um, those are the times that you choose the harder right over the easier wrong. Um, over the years, uh, I've been fortunate enough to have some game-changing moments and meet some game-changing people. And so um, second on my list of crap that I wish someone other than my parents told me before I graduated from high school um, is as you move on with your lives, you're going to meet some people you like, some that you don't like so much. But I challenge you with this. Whether you like the person or not, look for qualities in the people that you can incorporate into your own life. If there's someone that you truly look up to or someone that truly inspires you, keep them in your professional knapsack for future mentorship. I still speak pretty regularly with uh, Mr. Larry Ottman, who was my math teacher at Hatton Heights. Um, he's honestly one of the biggest reasons I decided to pursue an engineering and math uh, based majors, both for my undergrad and my master's. Um, and I, I literally do math for a living today, which I didn't know I really could do uh, as a thing, but you know, having uh, Larry Ottman as a mentor and a teacher um, made all the difference. And I've, I've, kept, I've kept in touch with him and asked for, him, asked for advice from him frequently. Um, during my time in the army, I've had bosses that I loved, bosses that I was incredibly afraid of and bosses that I, well, I'm not going to say, I'm just going to say that I strongly dislike them because hate is such a strong word, but the common factor is that they've all taught me something and uh, helped me to, to make me the leader that I am today. Um, as an example, my first boss, Major Boyd, I absolutely loved him. He taught me just about everything that I know about intelligence. Um, he taught me probably a million other things too, but most importantly, he taught me to find humor even in the most seemingly awful situations. We were, ploy we were deployed together in Iraq, which was my first deployment, um, and it was during the surge. So that meant 15 months in, in country. Um, to cap it off, we began our deployment in November. So that meant that we missed two Thanksgivings, two Christmases, and two New Year's in a row. It was like, yikes, you know? Um, and at the time, I was a 23-year-old lieutenant working a job two pay grades above my rank. And I mostly worked dynamic intel for things like high profile kidnapping, so super high stress. And with all that going on, I can't remember a single day that went by that I didn't smile or laugh um, with Major Boyd and the rest of my colleagues. Um, a few years later, at the ripe old age of 27, I was a company commander. On September 11, 2000, uh, 2011, exactly one decade after 9-11, I deployed my company of over 200 American soldiers to Afghanistan. Uh, my unit, we were tasked with um, we we were tasked with owning battle space, and that meant responsible for things like planning, preparation, execution of counterinsurgency operations, engagement with Afghan government officials um, at the provincial and the district levels, um, and also working with the Afghan National Army in Logar Province. Uh, roughly, there were about 500 American, Jordanian, Afghan, and Afghan soldiers under my command. Um, and if you didn't notice, I'm a woman, uh, so this didn't normally happen. Women weren't technically allowed in combat yet, uh, and to my knowledge, it had never happened to that extent, so I didn't really have any roadmap to follow. Um, <laughs> and my brigade commander, Colonel Landis, was one of those bosses that like just scared the crap out of me. He would chew me out left and right anytime anything went wrong, um, anything. <laughs> anything that went wrong in my battle space. And that tends to happen where, when you're co-located on the same base as your big boss. Um, like, do not recommend. But <laughs> uh, the thing is, uh, though this man put the fear of God in me, uh, he taught me to take responsibility. And I mean, really take responsibility and ownership. You know, I'm responsible for everything that my unit does and fails to do. I had said that a million times over the, year, but, over the years, uh, but I had never had anyone hold me accountable to the extent that Colonel Landis did. And for that, I'm grateful. 
I've really taken that le- that that lesson of ownership um, with me throughout my journey. I had the opportunity to teach and mentor cadets at West Point, um, which is my alma mater. And I finished my military career off at the Pentagon, influencing the moder- modernization policy for the Army. And then I transitioned into the civilian sector, and I got to build a customer intelligence capability at Gusto and helping to scale that startup to a $10 billion customer love focused tech company, which was an amazing learning experience. And today I'm proud to say that I recently took another leap and I'm I'm here today as the founder and CEO of the Data Love Co. It's my own tech company focused on customer intelligence and the transformational power of data. And that brings me to my next thing. I wish someone, oh, actually that, ne- that next uh, crap I wish someone other than my parents told me before I graduated from high school. Um, And that lesson is to don't be be afraid to bet on yourself. Um, That's, I'm I'm almost 40 now and it's taken me this long (laughs) to get there, but here I am. Um, I recently recorded a podcast interview for 06 Answers. And one of the questions I answered was, what advice would you give your younger self? And my answer was to give yourself grace. Um, and this one, it took. It also took me a long time to learn. I don't think I fully learned this until I was in my mid-30s, so just a couple of years ago. Um, so story time on May 3rd, and this is, a, you know, trigger warning, this is one of those difficult stories, um, kind of the ugly, I'll say. But on May 31st, 2012, before returning from Afghanistan, I was involved in a uh, firefight that left me with blast injuries, um, including a traumatic brain injury. I was hospitalized for 10 days. And then I had to go through four months of occupational therapy and then straight to grad school at Georgia Tech. Um, (laughs) The thing is that for the first time in my life, uh, school was hard, like really hard. My brain just was not working the way it used to. And I was so hard on myself. I would literally call myself an idiot. Um, I had been an honor roll and dean's list student my entire life. Now I was barely scraping by. Um, I needed a 2.7 to graduate with my master's and I graduated with a 2.72. I was embarrassed. I don't even know the word embarrassed doesn't seem like enough um, at the time uh, for how I felt. But it wasn't until many years later that I was able to look back on that experience and say, you know what? I am so proud of that 2.72. That is the best 2.72 that ever 2.72'd. <laughs> At the time, I was deep into PTSD following a year of really hard combat. Uh, My heart and my soul uh, were trying to heal and my brain was literally glitching. Um, So I'm proud of myself. Um, And so I'll just say, you know, please, please, please. And those those really hard moments, remember to give yourself grace. And now I need to pivot to finish out with, I'll tell you another war story that's not as harsh. Um, and this will be how I'm going to, this is, this is my last lesson to you. Um, so picture this, I'm on a dismounted patrol. So we're on foot with a couple of my platoons. We're in Eastern Afghanistan. Um, it was summertime. So pretty hot about 85 degrees, literally, but figuratively it felt like about a million degrees because we're wearing like 70 pounds worth of gear. Um, and we came under enemy fire. Uh, we began to maneuver and do that all that cool army stuff, you know, find cover, set up a support by fire position, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is the most tactically sound way uh, to maneuver went right through this creek, but it wasn't just any creek. Like it wasn't just a regular creek. It was a sewage creek. I'm gonna pause to let that sink in. Yeah, uh, a lot of places in Afghanistan don't have sophisticated sewage systems. So you can just imagine like what this creek is. And uh, anywho, we're facing what I like to call the dilemma. Do I go this way and have a greater shot of getting shot? And I mean, I've got all this gear on. It's most likely not going to hit anything vital, right? 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 Uh, Or do I go that way and wade through three feet or more of fecal matter? Mind you, I am, you can't see this, but I am only five foot three. So I'm talking, it's come, it's up to here if I were to wait through that. Um, it, it, but it was the most tactically sound way to go. Um, and so which way, this way or that way? Uh, yeah, so right through the poop creek, I went along with my platoons 
And that brings me to my my final crap I wish someone other than my parents had told me before I graduated from high school. Yeah, maybe the grass is greener on the other side, but you may have to wade through some serious crap to get there. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll say thank you so much once again for having me and um, congratulations to all the seniors here. Thank you, Jasmine, that was awesome. Um, I love you know, your thoughts about giving yourself grace. I think that we're all, no matter what age we are, are learning something every day. I think there's crap that I wish my parents had taught me that I'm still learning. So um, we definitely appreciate those words and I'm certain that the students do. Um, with that, we'll move to have remarks by Jahad al -Uta. He's the secretary of the uh, NAACP Camden County East, East Youth Council. Uh, we've asked him to say some words to our students and share some thoughts. Jahat. There it is. Hello, good, good afternoon. My name is Jahi Alukta. Uh, I'm a rising sophomore at Springside Chestnut Hill Academy, and I currently serve as the secretary to the NAACP Camden County East Youth Council. The mission of the NAACP Youth and College Division is to inform the youth of the problems affecting African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities. It's to advance the economic, education, so, uh, social, political status of African Americans and other racial and ethnic minorities and their harmonious cooperation with other peoples. To stimulate an appreciation for the African diaspora and other people of color's contribution to the civilization and to the development of intelligent, militant, effective youth leadership. We support this mission through multiple activities such as two college tours, one that focuses on Ivy League colleges and one on historically black colleges or universities. We meet every third Sunday where our members learn to lead and convene for justice. Today, we are excited to see some of our members being honored. Uh, Executive Committee members Zuri Alukta, who served as our treasurer, and Hanif Kadar, who served as our assistant treasurer, as well as Joseph, Martin, and Rashad Ellis. We are proud, and congratulations to all seniors. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Now we'll move on to have remarks, congratulatory words to our students. We'll start off with remarks by uh, Dr. Ron Johnson, superintendent of the Lawnside School District. Dr. Johnson. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to thank the Lawnside Scholarship Club for this opportunity to congratulate the graduating seniors from the class of 2023. Uh, clearly, believing in yourselves has led to success as you graduate from high school and we're moving on to your uh, future endeavors. Uh, with that being said, uh, continue to dream big and never place limitations on yourself and certainly do not allow others to set limits for you. Uh, never be afraid to stand in your truth and always work in your purpose. So again, congratulations on, uh, and on behalf of myself and the Lawnside School District, we want to wish you all continued success. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. I'm moving on, we're lucky to have a uh, other administrators that want to offer words of congratulations to our graduates. So we'll move on to Ms. Michelle Mendenhall. She's the Director of Student Services at Haddon Heights Junior and Senior High School. Ms. Mendenhall. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more um, in, about what Dr. Johnson kind of started about finding your purpose. Um, but first, I want to take the opportunity to thank the Longside Scholarship Club for inviting me to speak. Um, I truly feel honored that I get to address you all to address you all tonight. Um, looking through this list of kids is truly a full circle moment. I have had the honor of knowing many of you since your early elementary school days, and I'm truly so proud to see the respectable young adults you have become. Um, today we are here to celebrate the class of 2023 and the culmination of your high school journey. Each of you have faced unique challenges and obstacles in your path to this moment. We have overcome them all and you should be very proud of yourselves. As you stand here on the cusp of the next chapter of your lives, I want to talk to you about the importance of finding your purpose. Purpose is what drives us to pursue our dreams, to work hard and to overcome obstacles. Without purpose, life can be dull and uninspiring. 
I urge you to find your purpose. Discover what sets your soul on fire. It might be music, sports, education, science, or serving our country. Whatever it is, embrace it and pursue it with all of your heart. Finding your purpose is not always easy, trust me. <laughs> um, it may take some time and it may require some exploration and experimentation, but it is worth it. Your purpose will give you direction in life. As people of color, we are often told that the odds are against us, but I believe that finding our purpose can help us overcome those odds. When we pursue our purpose, we tap into our inner strength and the resilience of our ancestors. We become unstoppable. In the words of the late Chadwick Boseman, purpose is an essential element of you. It is the reason you are on the planet at this particular time in history. Your very existence is wrapped up in, in the things that you were here to fulfill. Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape your purpose. So class of 2023, as you embark on the next phase of your life, remember to find your purpose and pursue it with all of your hearts. Be bold, brave, and always be true to yourself. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Mendenhall. Next, we'll have Mr. Kareem Fisher, president, I'm sorry, principal of Haddon Heights Junior and Senior High School. Mr. Fisher. Good evening, everybody. Um, I want to thank the uh, Law and Science Scholarship Committee as well for having me speak um, for the third year in a row. Um, I'm going to not be as eloquent as Ms. Mendenhall, but I will brag on the class of 23 really quickly. Um, so I think uh, Ms. Monopoly uh, spoke on, about it briefly, but I just wanted to draw attention to the fact that the class of 23 um, and everybody on this call, as we know, the high school experience has been completely different and not just because of the pandemic and things like that. I think we lose the fact that this class has never had a year in high school that has been the same. So they started the year, got sent out because of COVID. The next school year in their sophomore year, they come back in that hybrid, you know, cohorts and things like that and trying to figure out a way to do online learning and, and how to be in person, but not in person. Um, during their junior year, it's the first year everybody's back and we know what the behaviors look like. We know what the year looked like, the social distancing, the close contact. So it was kind of a start and stop, start and stop. Nobody knew what was gonna be next. Um, and then finally this, this, this year, their senior year, their final year in school is what we get to a traditional high school experience for these students. And what I have to say, and what I'm very proud of this class for, and I think anybody who's worked in high schools, um, as long as I have knows, the seniors set the tone. This school year has been amazing. Um, behaviors, our younger students are learning from some great role models. We have had some of the best test scores. We've had, you know, AP scores and things like that. We have a lot of um, our Sydney district students who are attempting higher level classes and succeeding and setting that tone as the role models for our younger students to kind of move forward as they get through their high school experience. Um, so there's so many things that this class has done to set the tone, to be the role models we always look the seniors to be. And I'm really, really excited about what they're gonna be able to accomplish when they get set up in traditional ways, um, ways that we all experience. So as they go to college or start careers um, or start trades, they're going to have what seems to be a easier path than they, what they've had in high school. And as we all know, high school is that tough time where you're trying to figure out who you are, learn more about yourself and grow. And these, these seniors have done it flawlessly. So I commend you all for being the great role models that we always speak about, but really leading the charge this year and uh, making Haddon Heights what it has been this year for me. So thank you, class of 23. You guys are great. You know how I feel, and we speak often. So <laughs> thank you, everyone else, for uh, being here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Next, we'll welcome remarks by Mrs. Car Carla Bittner, the superintendent of the Haddon Heights School District. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here tonight to help celebrate our class of 2023. Uh, thank you especially to the Lawnside Scholarship committee for inviting me and allowing me to represent the district. Um, to our graduates, I say congratulations for being our MVPs, right? You've heard that term 
since you were little, you're a most valuable player, most valuable person. You have been selected tonight because you exemplify something that other students did not. Resilience, as Mr. Fisher referred to, the ability to continue your path forward no matter the challenges that you face. Tonight, however, I want to encourage you to take a moment to think about the MVPs in your life that got you here today. Uh, as a, a parent and an educator for a long time, I understand what it takes to help raise young people up. And you have had really amazing people at your side throughout this uh, time frame in your life. So number one, I encourage you to think about that MVP, that important person that got you through to today, and make sure that you take some time to thank them for getting you here. And then finally, I want to challenge you to become that MVP for somebody else. Uh, one of the greatest things that we need in life is someone by our side to help encourage us. And you all know what that is like. And I ask that you continue to carry on that tradition for us. Perhaps someday you'll be showing up here again, like Jasmine is as an MVP and supporting other young people um, to strive and reach their best. So again, congratulations. Thank you so much for having me here. I wish you all the best as you continue um, in your college and careers. And I hope that you will certainly stay in, in touch with the Haddon Heights School District. I know for sure that you will continue to make us proud. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Bittner. Um, and thanks to all of our speakers um, who have imparted words upon our students. I'm hoping that you know, each of our students can walk away with just something that they can carry forward in their college career and uh, in, in their life generally. Um, so now it's time for the, for the main events. The reason we're all here, it's time to recognize and applaud the class of 2023. This is a tremendous task. A lot of work has been put into this by the students, by their families, by the committee. And it's always done, the presentation of awards is always done well by our financial secretary, Mrs. Teresa Tutt. So I'll hand it over to you, Ms. Tutt. Good evening, everyone. Since 1975, resident students due to graduate from high school are contacted and invited to participate in our Salute to Seniors program. This year, contacts were made via regular mail, email, text, and in some instances, knocks on doors. Additionally, two visits to Haddon Heights High School occurred during the school year. A total of 36 students were invited to participate in our program. 11 students accepted the invitation. Seven are from Haddon Heights High School. Two are from Camden County Technical High School, Pennsauken campus. One from Woodbury Junior Senior High School and one from Springside Chestnut Hill Academy in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The mission of our club is to promote intellectual encouragement. A wide array of awards are available. However, students must participate in the program to be eligible to receive community donor awards. The Salute to Seniors, excuse me, the Lawnside Scholarship Club salutes each student for reaching this very important milestone, high school graduation. Now our presentation of the awards. Celia Thurman, Haddon Hikes High School. Her awards, the Lawnside PTA has donated $150 to be split equally between two students, one male, one female, who do good work and render service while not necessarily getting credit for it. The Lawnside PTA Unsung Hero Award of $75 goes to Celia. In honor of their parents, Amos and Roxy Rogers, the Rogers family give $100 to a graduating student who intends to pursue either barbering or cosmetology. Celia wants to get her cosmetology license and at some point open her own shop in South Jersey. Congratulations, Celia. Jason Brown, Haddon Hikes High School. The Lawnside PTA Unsung Hero Award for a male student goes to Jason. That is $75. The Raymond G. Davis Jr. Memorial Award of $150 given by Mrs. Lynn Robinson is for a student who perseveres to the end no matter what. 
Again, Jason, congratulations. Rashid Ellis, excuse me, Rashad Ellis, Haddon Heights High School. The Leon N. Williams Law Award given by the Williams family is $300. It goes to a student planning a career in law. No participating senior intends to pursue a career in law. The Williams family, which includes Lawnside Scholarship Club member Patrice Fields, removed all criteria restrictions so that the proceeds for this name excuse me, named award be distributed to help a student. Congratulations, Rashad. You received $300. Karima Brown, Woodbury Junior High School, Junior Senior High School. Mr. and Mrs. Dwight Anderson donate $200 for the Dwight and Yvonne Anderson Award to be split equally between two students, one male, one female, who have shown the most improved grades during senior year. The Rick Williams Health Services Award given by the family of Leon and Williams in the amount of $300 is for a student entering any healthcare field. Karima will be attending William Patterson University and major in sports medicine. Ciara Lewis, Haddon Heights High School. The Dorothea S. Carter Memorial Award given by the family of Ms. Jacqueline Carter Warren is for a deserving student needing financial assistance to further his or her education. The award is $500. Ciara plans to attend Rowan University in the fall. Allure Tinley, Haddon Heights High School. The IR and Anna J. Bryant Award of $100 given by the Bryant family is for a student outstanding in accounting or business. Mrs. Bertha Cobia has donated funds for a student who has shown great improvement. Allure will receive $500 for the Bertha Cobia Award. He plans to attend Camden County College in the fall. Hanif Kadar, Camden County Technical High School, Pennsylvania campus. The Thomas Whitaker Award for Mechanical Advancement given by Thomas Whitaker, son of our club president, Sharon Whitaker, in the amount of $100 is for a student pursuing a career in a mechanical field. Hanif receives $100 as the male student identified for the Dwight and Yvonne Anderson Award for having shown the most improved grade during senior year. The Henry Long Memorial Award given by Mrs. Doritha Webb in the amount of $500 is for a student excelling in computer science. Anif has been accepted into Rowan, Morgan State, and Montclair Universities. Adelina Jackson, Haddon Heights High School. The Edna Harper Service Award for Good Citizenship and Service in the amount of $150 is given by the Harper family. The Ephraim J and Mary C. Still Award in the amount of $300 and given by Lawnside Scholarship Club Vice President, Mrs. Winifred Still Davis and the Still family is for the student showing the most improvement over the four years in high school. It will be awarded at the Haddon Heights High School graduation. The Bryson C. Armstead Award is available to a student who displays good moral characteristics, is motivated and determined, has a good attendance record, and needs financial assistance to further his or her education. This award is $750. Tylena will be attending Kane University. Dylan Paisley, Haddon Heights High School. 
the fourth highest ranking graduating student for 2023 is eligible to receive $1,500 from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. Dylan did not participate, however, we congratulate him on his academic accomplishments and wish him the best in the future. Bengali Canoe at an Hikes High School. The third highest ranking student is eligible to receive $1,750 from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. He is also qualified to receive $500 for, the, for an Elizabeth Jones Academic Excellence Award from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. The Helen May Henderson Nursing Award of $50 given by Lloyd D. Henderson Esquire is for a student entering a health field. The Dr. William Young Health Services Award given by Dr. Marie Young in the amount of $250 is for a student entering a health field. The Lanice Miller Award of $250 given by the Lawnside Scholarship Club goes to a student showing outstanding leadership and initiative qualities. This award will be presented at the Haddon Heights High School graduation ceremony. Bengali will be attending Rutgers, New Brunswick. His career goal is to become a doctor or nurse. Nicole Garcia, Camden County Technical High School, Pennsylvania campus. The student with the second highest average is eligible, eligible to receive $2,000 from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. She also qualifies to receive a $500 Elizabeth Jones Academic Excellence Award from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. The Curtis and Lula Moss Memorial Award in the amount of $50 given by former Lawnside Scholarship recipient, Mrs. Melody Moss Walcott, is for the student who has been involved in the most activities. Stephen Israel provides $500 for the Stephen Israel Unsung Hero Award. The Sonia Farmer Character Award is given by Dr. Tonia Farmer Pitts for a student with outstanding character. This award is $500. Nicole will be attending Stockton University in their nursing program. Her goal is to become a registered nurse specializing in psychiatry and later becoming a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Zuri Al-Ugda, Springside Chestnut Hill Academy. The top award given by the Lawnside Scholarship Club is $2,500 and is available for this graduating senior with the highest academic average. She also qualifies to receive $500 from the Elizabeth Jones Academic Excellence from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. The Edna J. Sports Award of $100 given by former Lawnside Scholarship Club member, Mrs. Helen J. is for a student outstanding in sports. The Majid Freehaven Model Citizen Award of $200 is for a well-rounded, service-oriented student with a spotless disciplinary record. The Walter A. Gaines Natural Science Award given by the Gaines family in the amount of $200 is for the student with the highest average in science. The Dr. Flora Young Award of $250 is for a student pursuing higher education and has the highest average in social science. The Madge Mitchell Math Award of $400 given by former Lawnside Scholarship Club recipient, Dr. Paul Mitchell Jr. and former Lawnside Scholarship Club recipient and former Lawnside Scholarship Club member, Mrs. Paula Davis, is for the student who is outstanding in math. The Dr. and Mrs. Cecil Still Award of $500 is given by Mrs. Dolores Still and is for a student entering a science or medical field. The Stephen Israel Sports Award of $500 given by Stephen Israel goes to the student who excels in sports. 
Zuri will be attending Halbert University, her number one choice school on a pre-med track to become an anesthesiologist or a neurologist. No participating student qualified for the following awards. Attorney Melody Moss gives an award for a, a student entering law. That is $100. The Joy M. Harper Award donated by Mrs. Joy Harper is for a student intending to pursue a degree in the field of education. That award is $200. The Lawnside Scholarship Club Creative and Performing Arts Award of $100 goes to a student pursuing higher education and is outstanding in any of the arts. The Helen May Henderson Teaching Award of $250 given by the Lawnside Scholarship Club is for a student who plans to be a teacher. Oprah Winfrey said, quote, follow your passion. It will lead to your purpose, end quote. Students, dream big, pursue your passion, be focused, be determined, be hopeful, dream and believe to succeed. Congratulations, class of 2023 from the Lawnside Scholarship Club. Gina. Round of applause. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Tutt. Um, we're going to take some time to hear from some of the teachers who want to congratulate the students that they have taught. So I'll turn it over to our event coordinator. Guess who? Hi, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2023. I am so proud of you guys. And it's such an honor to be able to share this video with you. Now that you have completed the first leg of your journey in this thing called life, I have a few questions for you to ponder. First, think about who you are now. Second, think about who you will be in the future. And third, what path will you take in order to succeed? You know, Ms. Snowden always has questions. I mean, come on, understand I was your librarian, okay? But these questions, I want you to take them into your life as you move forward in life, I should say, because these are a foundation in helping you navigate life challenges. And you will have some. Remember I used to say to you guys, tools, I'm giving y'all tools. Well, here's a few more to put into that toolbox. Rashad and Allure, I need you guys to always remember that songs are nothing but poems put to music. Keep rapping. Bengali, silent, smart, and funny. Please keep smiling. Smooth talking Hanif, keep walking on your path. Celia, stay sweet, and remember, you will always be a role model to your sister. My stylish queen, Sierra, keep rocking that crown and remember who you are and where you came from. Karima, Karima, I'm still deleting selfies that you took with my phone out of my phone. I don't know how you got my password but I want you to always remember you have the power to break the cycle. Tylena, it has been a pleasure watching you grow into the young lady I see today. Keep your eye on the prize and keep hustling. Now, Nicole and Jason, I didn't forget about you. I, I just didn't get to spend a whole lot of time with you guys, but I wanna thank you so much because y'all fell right into the lawn side groove. I really do appreciate that. Well, it's time for me to wrap this up because y'all know, y'all know Miss Snowden. I'm going to start crying. I get teary dyed. I get teary dyed. So I want to leave you with this. In the famous words of one of my famous artists, Kendrick Lamar, when times get tough, 
and you got to react, don't let them take you out your element. Ah, take you out your element. <laughs> I love you all and wish you so much success in the future. Stay sweet, stay strong, and know that Miss Newton loves you. Oh, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Don't tell nobody, but y'all know y'all was my favorite class, right? <laughs> Bye. Oops. Back to you, Gina. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, I actually got a little whelmed up, overwhelmed by that. I miss, I, Miss Noden wasn't my librarian, but I had inter interacted with her, and I just think her word, especially the personal word that she has for the students, is just um, just awesome. And I think it's a blessing for you know the students to have someone like Miss Snowden that can come back and really speak to their personalities and give them words of encouragement for the future. So, with that, um, thank you for to all of our speakers, our presenters, to Reverend Still. Um, the students will look back one day and thank and thank you for the impression that you made on them today. So let's again give our students and their families a round of applause and showcase our students and families on the screen. Perfect. All right. Now you will hear from the club president, Ms. Sharon Whitaker. She is our visionary keeping the club up to date with new innovations. We applaud her excellence in trying to make sure that every graduating senior residing in Lawnside is recognized at graduation time. Ms. Whit Whitaker. Good evening, everyone. Um, before we close our program, I would like to have those seniors that uh, came in as number three. Ms. Bengali, I would like to have you say something in reference to support from your family first. If you would unmute yourself. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm honored to be number three for this club. I'd like to thank the family and all the teachers and mentors that guided me, you know, through Longside and Han Heights. I appreciate what you guys do and thank you for letting me let me feel welcome in this town and i would like to thank the members of the Longside scholarship club for giving me this opportunity too and for helping the community and thank you guys so much for the opportunity and i appreciate it thank you so much and now i would like to have the speaker who is number two Awarded number two, would you have a few words to say, Garcia? Um, I just want to thank my family um, who have been just my greatest support. Um, they have been here through thick and thin, especially like we always said that this past few years have been really hard. We have been just going through all these ups and downs, but I think also during these few years, I moved to Lawnside and I found a family here too. I found a community that is always just ready to support, even from our mayor to just that supportive figure, just wanting every single kid growing up here to do their best. And lastly, I wanna thank God too, because I wouldn't have been able to make it here and I won't be able to continue without him. Thank you so much, Gar uh, Nicole. And now our number one, Zuri al -Ukta. I would have a few words from you. Um, I would first like to thank God for blessing me with um, all the guidance and support that has allowed me to be here today. I would like to thank my mother and father for supporting me emotionally and financially all throughout my time in high school. Uh, my grandmother and family for supporting me and um, Sister Claire Muhammad School for helping me grow spiritually. And lastly, I would like to thank the One Side Scholarship Committee for not just recognizing me, but all the students here today and all the hard work that has like 
going on to put on all of this. Um, I can see that all that work has paid off through myself and through my senior class and even my parents that were a part of this many years ago. Um, so thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I applaud you, young people. So as I say, as we close our program, I hope everyone has enjoyed celebrating and highlighting the achievements of our graduating class of 2023. Their achievements are even more special because they have excelled during the challenging times we experienced over the past few years. This is the 78th anniversary of the Lawnside Scholarship Club and our 48th Salute to Senior Graduating Seniors celebration. And for all of you who are with us today, we wish to offer you our most sincere thanks. Our club has a storied history which you can read at your leisure in our program booklet that will be made available to our graduating class, their parents, as well as our donors, sponsors, and advertisers at a later time. Several years ago, we created a video of our former LSC presidents sharing their reflections. It can still be purchased for a small fee that goes toward our work. We wish to thank these ladies for giving of, our time, of their time and talents and letting the records of them, letting us record them for historical preservation. We would also like to acknowledge our longstanding community award donors and their families for more than 20 years of supporting our Lawnside graduating students. And they are I.R. Bryant, I.R. and Anna J. Bryant, the Dorothea S. Carter Memorial Award, Raymond G. Davis Jr. Memorial Award, Sonia L. Farmer Award, Stephen Israel Awards, Edna J. Sports, Henry Long Memorial, Madge L. Mitchell, Curtis and Lula Moss, Melody Moss Walcott, Amos and Roxy Rogers Memorial, Doctors and Mrs. Cecil Still, Ephraim J. and Mary C. Still, Doctors William and Flory Young. Many thanks to some of the most generous donors, Elizabeth Jones, Byron C. Armstead Sr., and the former state senator, Wayne R. Bryant and the Bryant family. We are thankful for sponsorships from Zally's ShopRite of Lawnside, the Wimberley family, Samlin, Samlin Consulting, Raymond Bayard Real Estate, Dr. Ra Mr. Raj Kanera of Dunkin' Donuts on Lawnside, Vineland Construction Company, and Wiley State Farm Insurance Agency. We want to thank all our sponsors and donors for their support. We would also like to offer special thanks to Lawnside's mayor, Mary Ann Wardlow, and the Lawnside Council for their support and, <clears throat> and their 2023 Proclamation for the 78th anniversary of the club. We express thanks to the many other businesses who have enhanced the scholarship club's efforts by advertising in our program booklet this year. Many thanks, many, many thanks to our keynote speaker, Mrs. Jasmine Walker Matapoli, who was raised in Lawnside and graduated from Haddon Heights in our class of 2022 as our top recipient. Thank you, Jasmine, for giving up a lifting message to the class of 2023. We would also like to thank Superintendent Dr. Ron Johnson of the Lawnside School District and the Lawnside School staff for their video of congratulations messages to our students. We want to thank Superintendent Mrs. Carla Bittner of Haddon Heights School District and Mrs. Michelle Mendenhall, Haddon Heights Director of Student Services. Many thanks to Principal Kareem Fisher for hanging in here with us for another year <laughs> and for their congratulatory remarks from all of them for the class of 2023. We also want to thank Reverend Clifford Still of Mount Zion United Methodist Church for the blessing of the class of 2023. The Lawnside Scholarship Club wants to thank all past recipients their families, as well as our 21 Black History honorees 
and their families for having all supported this club for many years. And we count on your continued support. We would like to offer many thanks to the virtual host, Mrs. Nat Ms. Natasha Scott of Foreman Facet for assisting with the broadcasting of the Facebook Live and her Zoom platform. This, <clears throat> this being recorded and will later at a later date be could be viewed, can be viewed on our YouTube channel. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right. And thanks to Jahi, <clears throat> Jahi Al Uta of the, of the NAAC Camden County East Youth Council for his congratulatory message to the class of 2023 and to their advisor and a coordinator, Maisha Aziz Esquire. Many, th many, many thanks also for the beautiful rendition of Lift Every Voice, the solo selection by Mr. Depp. My sweet granddaughter, London Olivia Grace Curtis Whitaker, my son, Thomas Whitaker, and my daughter-in-law-to-be, Valencia Williams, and her sweet daughter, Aspen, and all the extended family and friends who surround me with love. And to the former club members of the Lawnside Scholarship Club, for all of their continued support, they have shown our current club members and me how to continue this intellectual encouragement for the future of our Lawnside youth. We would not be here now if it was not for these wonderful, beautiful angels from the past. We will try our best to continue and press the torch and pass the torch with its flame burning bright to the next generation. To the class of 2023, I commend you for your commitment to academic excellence in these extraordinary challenging times. You are an exceptional group of graduates. Never give up on your dreams. Shoot for the stars. And remember that all great achievements require time. The key to those achievements is your continued education. So you should dream and believe to succeed. Now I want to give many, many thanks to this wonderful, gracious, and beautiful women with whom I am honored and proud to serve this community. Some of these ladies have served for more than 30 years. Winifred Still Davis, Lawnside Scholarship Club Vice President and Educational Chairperson. Ms. Gloria Goodman, Lawnside Scholarship Treasurer, and she is our virtual event chair. Teresa Tutt, our Financial Secretary and <clears throat> scholarships and community awards presenter that you heard from this evening. Ebony Goodman, a member of the Lawnside Scholarship Club. Linda Shockley is our booklet chairperson, member. Chantel Davis, member, virtual video coordinator for the Lawnside Public School staff. Patrice Fields, a new member and our booklet committee. Gina Wardlow Hill, she is our 2023 virtual event MC and our recording secretary. Minira Higgs, Lawnside Scholarship Club member. Chen Johnson, Lawnside Scholarship Club member and event virtual event chair. And I am Sharon Whitaker, the president, and as they say, virtual event general chair. <laughs> We end this evening with deep appreciation and thanks to all that have helped make this fourth virtual event successful. Thanks for a job well done. If we have omitted or forgotten anyone or thing, please, please charge it to our heads and not our hearts. We thank you for all your support and may you stay safe and stay well. And now, we will have the closing blessing from Reverend Clifford Still. Thank you. Uh, and just before we close, I again, I want to thank the Longside Scholarship Club for allowing me to participate in this prestigious celebration of our young people. 
as they are now young adults. So class of 2023, I'm going to leave you with this. The road to success is not straight. There's a curve called failure, a loop called confusion, speed bumps called friends, red lights called enemies, and caution lights called family. You will have flats called jobs, but if you have a spare called determination, an engine called perseverance, insurance called faith, and a driver named Jesus, you will make it to the place called success. Now receive your blessing. Most gracious and glorious Father, we are thankful for each and every one of our young people that are graduating and going on. We pray that you would continue to cover them and keep them as they go forth. And now, Father God, we ask that you make a way for them out of no way. We ask that you would continue to protect them and lift them up. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go with God. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all very much for being here once again. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Night, everybody. Good night.